Hi everyone, welcome back to Ukulele Next Steps with me, Matt Stead. In this video, we're going to have a look at picking patterns, using our right hand to pick beautiful arpeggiated notes to make a song sound really lovely. We're going to continue with Trouble in Mind, linked to the last video in the description, and we're going to add these lovely finger picking patterns to make it sound really nice. We're going to look at the technique using this hand in terms of positioning and picking style. And we're going to look at altering these patterns in the song to make it much more dynamically interesting. Let's take a look. Just a quick reminder, all the sheets you need for today's video are available as printable PDFs. If you just click the link in the description, you'll be able to find these and either download them or print them. Um, just a word of warning to those that um, printed these out last week. I have made a slight change on this page. So if you already printed them out from last week's lesson, if you could just reprint the fifth page, this one here with the picking patterns on, I've just made a slight change to this diagram. Now let's take a look at the picking patterns first of all. Now in a minute, I'm gonna go over all the technical details with your picking hand down here, but let's just take a look at what's happening. I call this picking pattern the there and back pattern because it's like we go down to the A string and then we come back again. And when I piece that together, it'll sound something like this. Nice and simple, but yet effective. Trouble in mind, I'm blue, but I won't be blue. Let's have a look at what's happening with this hand here, first of all. The technique we're going to use today is often called a Pima style technique. That just means we associate a thumb or a particular finger with picking a particular string. The reason it's called Pima is because this comes from classical guitar technique and in Spanish your thumb is polga, P, I, indice, index, M, medio, middle, and A, annular, that's your ring finger in Spanish. So P, I, M, A. We don't really need to worry about that for now. All we need to care about is that when we pick our strings in this picking pattern, any time we pick the G string, we're going to use our thumb. And I'll talk about technique with this in a minute. Any time we pick the C string index, any time we pick the E string middle, and any time we pick the A string ring finger. So thumb, index, middle, ring. Thumb, index, middle, ring. Now, before we actually practice that, let's have a look at a couple of important things and angles. I keep banging on about these, don't I, in all my videos, but they're so important. Notice that my uke is at a 45 degree angle. It's not like this, it's not like that. It's right in the middle, 45 degrees, just resting on my lap. And notice this arm, we're, play, we're using something called short arm technique. In classical guitar, we can think of our arm position as short arm, where we're coming over the top of the instrument, or long arm, where we're coming along from the side of the instrument. So side on long arm, because our arm looks long, over the top short arm, because our arm looks shorter. So by just resting this part of your arm on the upper bout, that should mean that roughly where the body of the uke meets the neck, you can quite comfortably keep your hands in this position. Now, some people find that their nails get caught up in the fingerboard and some people prefer to bring their fingers back here where there's no fingerboard to kind of bang into. There's a bit more of a gap so you can dig in more. Just through habit, I tend to play up here because I like the warm tone that it produces. But either is absolutely fine. Find what's comfortable for you. But here's the important thing. Notice that with my uke at this angle, my fingers are at another 45 degree angle. They're not like this, which would mean I would be picking with the side of my finger, which is really difficult to do. They're not like this, which is a classical guitar technique where they're right in the middle. They're in the middle, again, a 45 degree angle. And the reason for that angle is that it means when I pick a string, the string rolls across my nail and produces a nice warm tone. If 
if I'm using the side of my nails, even if you've got very short nails, I've got long, you don't need to have long nails like mine, I just like the tone it produces. Even if you've got short nails, if your hand is side on, you're more likely to find the string kind of gets caught underneath your nail and it produces that kind of twangy sound, which is what we're trying to avoid. This can be nice, but it can be a bit uncomfortable. I find just that 45 degree angle is just perfect. Some players like to anchor their little finger on the soundboard so that you have something to pull up against and keep your hands steady. I actually do tend to do that. I don't find that it hurts the tone at all and I can still have freedom of movement with these fingers. Um, many players, especially those that have come from classical guitar, tend to keep this one floating out the way so it can be used for alternating picks later on and you have more freedom of movement of those fingers. Um, I'd like you to try both and see what feels most comfortable for you. Finally, when it comes to the thumb, some people like to put their thumb up here so it's past the fingers this way. I actually tend to pull the thumb back so that it sits just behind my index finger. The reason is when I pick the G string then, I'm using my nail on my thumb, which produces a warmer tone. Whereas if it's up here, I have to use the pad of my thumb, which produces quite a nice soft, but not quite as deep a tone. Now it's up to you, depending on whether you've got your neck, whether you've got long nails, short nails, and what you find most comfortable. Again, I don't wanna to be too prescriptive about this. You need to develop your own style and see what works for you best. Thumb here or further forward. Next up, to practice this hand technique, I want you to cycle through the strings from G through C, E and to A. And just cycle them one at a time. G, C, E, A, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now, because your fingers are different sizes and strengths, you might find as you practice this at first, some of those strings sound a little bit louder than the others. So really concentrate on keeping it nice and gentle and consistent. We're looking for a warm tone and we're looking for consistency across all of those notes. The other thing you want to do is make sure that your fingers cycle in towards the palm, but very slight. Can you see how I'm cycling through them? See how they're moving towards the palm, but with very small movements. We don't need kind of big, kind of right back here, just very small movements. That allows it to be able to come back down and pick the next string on the next way through. Notice I'm also making sure I don't touch any, any of the other strings with my fingers because if I accidentally touch a string when I go to put my next finger down, it deadens it. And we want that nice, we call it a free pick. Those notes ring out very loud and clear into the next one. Just practice that round a few times, getting really comfortable. So without any further ado, let's have a look at our finger picking diagrams. These are a form of tablature. And remember tablature, everything's kind of upside down. So the lines across represent your ukulele strings, G string, C string, E string, A string. And we call this one the common time pick. You can also think of it as a there and back again pick because we're going from the G string towards the A string and then back to where we started. The numbers down the bottom are just your counts in a measure. So we're in common time. So one and two and three and four and. So let's have a look at how we actually play that on our ukulele. So I'm not going to hold down a chord at all with this hand. I'm just going to use it to support the weight of the ukulele. You can use a strap if you like, but I'm just supporting the weight here. And my thumb is going to pick from G to A, G, C, E, A, and then I come back in reverse, E, C, G. So G down to A, G, C, E, A, E, C, G. And can you see why we're calling it there and back again? Because we're going there and then back to where we started. And I want you to practice just that going round and round. One and two and three and four, 
one and two and three and four one and two and three and four notice there's no pick on the final offbeat there's no pick here on this and and that's quite nice it allows you to adjust between chords which we'll see in just a minute but just be conscious of that when you're practicing one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four rest one and two and three and four and fantastic now let's do exactly the same thing but this time we're going to give it a swing so rather than now we have Now swing is a feeling, we're playing slightly behind the beat on some of the notes. It's almost impossible to teach using kind of diagrams or crotchets and quavers. The way I like to think about it is that if we think about our strong beats as one, two, three and four, we think of the off beats as the ands in between. It's like we linger ever so slightly longer on the on beats, the, one with the ones with the numbers. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. Do you see the difference? If I make them the same. One and two and three and four. Swing. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. Just practice that round a few times. Then we'll start to piece it together with the chords. Notice that when I piece that together with some chords, that that offbeat at the end where we don't play a note, it gives you a chance to change chords quickly. It's like a little pause, a little breath to give yourself time to change the chords. I'll show you what I mean with a sharp intake of breath. You see how it just gives me that little bit of time to change chords. So what I'd like to do is practice changing between a G and a D7. I don't mind if you play the D7 using your Hawaiian style or this way using a bard style. But what I want you to do is once through that picking pattern on a G, once on a D7, back to G, D7, Let's do it together after four. One and two and three and four. D7. G. D7. G. D7. G. Excellent. So this finger picking pattern works beautifully for any time we have a piece of music where all of the chords are played for one measure. Because each of those finger picking patterns is exactly a measure in common time, one and two and three and four. 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 Ah! What happens where we have more than one chord per measure? Now, this is where I tend to change my picking pattern specifically for any time I have a measure with two chords in. Part of the reason is certain chords that change, you won't actually hear the change when we do this method. And this is a really nice example, C to C7. Notice if I do the there and back again pick. You don't actually hear this change from this C note here to this B flat note or a C chord to a C7 because by the time this finger goes down to change to C7, I've already picked the A string, so we don't actually hear that change. So we need to change to a slightly different finger picking pattern for any time we have two chords in a measure. So what I do is this very simple finger picking pattern here. I'm literally playing from the G string to the A string twice. One and two and three and four and. So that would sound something like this. Without a chord. One and two and three 
G C E A G C E A. Just top to bottom twice, right? Not too bad. Notice when I put that together with the C to C7. Because I play the A string twice, you can hear both the C chord and the C7 chord. So what we're going to do, we're going to piece that together then. And to practice it, we're going to play this second variation on your structure and addition sheet. So it's the one that says with dominant chords. We've added this G7 in here and this C7 in here. I'll play it through twice through because it will give you a chance to listen to what I do and you can join in that time or you can just listen and then join in the second time. Let's have a go. We'll come in after one and two and three and four and. Here we go. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four. 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 There we go. Not too shabby, right? Let's try it without me saying the numbers so you can really play along with me and concentrate on the sounds. One and two and three and four. Brilliant. Well done. Let's try it with the singing then so you can hear how it sounds in the song. I'm going to count in one and two and travel in and you come in on the word mind. There's that pick up measure at the start, isn't there? I'll give you an example. One and two and travel in mind. Okay. One and two and travel in mind. I'm blue. But I won't be blue always Cause the sun's gonna shine in my back door someday There you go. Now what I'd like you to do is practice that round several times. Now it's quite hard to pick that pattern and sing at the same time, isn't it? It's quite tricky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide you with like a backing track. I'm just going to play two of those choruses, just means two of those sections. And as I'm strumming gently, you do your picking pattern. And it will mean you can listen to me singing and play along and you won't have to worry about doing two things at the same time. Let's have a go. We're going to have one, two, trouble in and come in on mind again. One, two, trouble in mind. I'm blue, but I won't be blue always. Cause the sun's gonna shine in my back door someday. All alone at midnight, and my lamp is burning low. I never had so much trouble in my life before. Great stuff. Now, here's your homework to practice this. If you're struggling with that and you're finding it difficult, all I want you to do is pick that pattern through with our basic chords, this first progression. There are none of those measures with two chords, so you can just keep doing that there and back again pattern. 
If you feel more confident, you can just do the one we were just looking at then with the two chords per measure on the C to C7, and then just keep following it through. If you're feeling confident with that, try the, the version with the G6s, and then eventually when you're feeling really confident, you can tackle these difficult chord changes where we have the turnarounds. Now, these can be quite tricky, um, two chords per measure, but just take it slow, go whichever tempo you want. And just remember that simple rule that we're going to do there and back again for any time we have a chord for one measure. Any time we have two chords in a measure, you're going to do your once down twice. Now, many people love this picking pattern because it buys you a little bit of time, like I mentioned, with that breath, that final offbeat, we don't have a pick. So it allows you to change chords smoothly. Other people find that a bit unsatisfying and they feel the need for a note or a pick on every single beat. So here's a neat little trick that I'm going to show you where we're going to alter this pattern to actually add an extra note and fill up every one of those beats. So let's take a look at what's happening with this pattern. I'm going to play a G chord and notice the first Four picks of this are exactly the same as the other picking patterns that we've used. We're going from the G string to the A string. But when we get there, can you see there's an X that has a little note after it saying add note. What we're going to do is we're going to use our little finger to pick an extra note on the A string. Now, which extra note you add depends on, on your kind of taste. But the one thing I will say is all you need to do is make sure that the note belongs in the key that you're playing. So in the key of G, the key of G major is easy because it's G going through the alphabet upwards and there's one sharp in it, an F sharp. So G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp and G. And as long as you pick any of those notes for your additional note, it will sound right. So, for example, my favourite one to do is to hit this note up here, which is a high D. That's especially nice because there's already a D in the in G, so it's like playing another chord tone. So what, in effect, I'm doing is I'm picking up to the A string. I'm picking the A string again, but I'm adding that D note in, stretching up to the fifth fret. And then I'm playing the A note one last time with it off. So that will sound like this. I'm just not talking in terms of notes, just strings. I'm going to play G, C, E, A, add, off, G, C, E, A, 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 G, C, E, A, add the note, take it away. Can you see how that's working? And to finish it off, I just come back through the pattern. G, C, E, A, add, off, E, C. Does that make sense? Now, by doing that, I filled up every one of the beats, including the off beats. One and two and three and four and... Isn't that lovely? If I roll that round. I could make the additional note, this C here, because there's a C note in the key of G. So what I'd like you to do is just pause the video and just practice that. Just again in slow motion, we're doing the finger picking pattern to the A string. We're adding a note on the A string and picking it, playing the A one last time and coming back. G, C, E, A, A with a note, A without a note, E, C. Practice that round a few times yourselves. Now the key to this is just have fun and experiment and see which notes sound good to you. When I do the D7 measures, what I tend to do is a Hawaiian D7, this 2020 D7, because that leaves this A string empty for me to add this note in here, this B note, so I could play. Do you see that? I'm playing through the pattern, adding the B note, taking it off and coming back again.
I could do this D7 and add this one. Because we know that that D note works. Let's try this one though. One and two and three and four and... Add off. Add off. And finally, when I do the G7, the note that I like to add because it's easiest and it does sound effective is this C note here. Can you see how that's working? And it fills up that measure and it sounds very, very nice. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play through the second set of chords, the ones, the one that says with the dominant chords, and I'm going to show you that trick so you can see how it sounds over the whole thing. When I get to this measure where we have two chords per measure, I'm just going to do exactly what we did the last time, which is down top to bottom twice. You'll soon get an idea. Now, if you are feeling really confident and you've got this technique, why not try playing along? But if you're not quite ready yet and you're not expected to be quite yet, just soak this all in and use this as an example as how this technique can sound when you've had a chance to practice it. One and two and three and four and... Now this next bit is totally optional. It's just for those that are flying and they really want to try and fancy this up further. What I'll often do is when I get to that part where I add a note to the chord, I'll actually pick all four strings at the same time. So for instance, when I'm playing the bit where I play G with that D added, rather than just picking the A string, I'll actually pull up all four strings. All I'm doing is pinching down with the thumb and pulling out out all of my other three fingers and have that pinching sound. So rather than this, I have this. Do you hear? It's a very slight sound of a full chord. Just something to experiment with. It can really lift it, just that extra part. But just for now, practice whichever of those you feel most comfortable with. And just a quick 30 second example of how it can sound when you mix those all up. Trouble in mind, I'm blue, but I won't be blue always, cause the sun's gonna shine round my back. Someday. Just adds that little kind of that little gemstone of a bit of glitter over the top. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Take it slowly, work through those picking patterns one at a time. And if you enjoyed it, why not apply those to other songs? Any song that's in 4 4 common time, which is the vast majority of repertoire, you can add this to. So experiment and enjoy yourself.